So imagine that you send your child to the hospital for a simple procedure, a very simple procedure like circumcision. Imagine you receive your child after the procedure. Six hours down the line, your child dies. And it turns out that the doctor did some clinical trial on your child without your knowledge, without your approval, without the hospital's approval. What would you do? Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Real Crimes and yeah, so in today's episode, we are going to talk about, no, 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 before that, guys, subscribe, comment, like, share, do whatever you have to do, make people know about this channel, okay? All right, back to the story. So today we are going to talk about a serial killer in the 1990s actually it's from the 1980s to the 1990s and this serial killer was in Zimbabwe and he was nicknamed Dr. Death but why such a name well simple because he was a doctor and he was killing Dr. Death <laughs> all right so Dr. Death was actually born uh, Richard something Mark uh, Gowan. Okay. He was born in India. His parents were Scottish, but he was born in India. He was born in 1937 in India. Yeah. But he grew up in uh, Glasgow and he went to the University of Edinburgh. Like this guy was all over from childhood, right? Right. So after he did his, um, he, studied, he studied at Edinburgh University, he decided to specialize in anesthetic. And he was an anesthetist. Anesthetist. Ah, medical words. No. That's some deep English. I, 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 okay, I'll just write down the name. So anyway, he was an, an anesthetist and yeah, because of his job, you know what those people do, right? Those are the people that will inject you before an operation. They will make you sleep. They will put you to sleep before an operation. And obviously they need to know the doses, the correct doses to get somebody to sleep through the operation, whether it's a long procedure or it's a short procedure, they need to be able to know all that how they do that i have no idea but what i can tell you is the measurements of whatever they inject into you are different they differ from person to person from procedure to procedure okay so he was specialized in that those are the people that could actually kill you you know that mm. those are the people that could get you killed but however when he was doing his job he didn't kill from he didn't kill anybody on the operation table he actually killed people after the operation yeah dr death <laughs> all right so after graduating from edinburgh uh dr death oh let me not be let me be nice dr magon uh worked in in sweden and then he worked in zambia and then he eventually moved to Zimbabwe in the 1960s. Okay. There he was in anesthetist. Yeah, I think I got it this time. So he was there and right. So he got obsessed with the idea of dealing with pain after an operation. He, oh my God. Okay. I hope you, we are not getting noise from the aircon. If I turn it off, guys, I'll freeze to death. It's winter over here. So my aircon is on. It's probably making some noise. But I hope my voice is loud enough to be overriding the aircon. So anyway, back to my story. So he became obsessed with the idea of managing pain after an operation. Mm. He decided he wants patients not to feel pain after the operation. Very kind doctor, you would think, right? 
except he did not follow a procedure. He didn't follow the correct procedure of doing this. So he started experimenting by himself. He started experimenting on patients. It is believed that between 1986 um, and 1992, he experimented on over 500 people. Here is the thing, doctor, if you're going to experiment on people, if you're going to do clinical trials on people, that's okay. But how about we follow the correct procedure? How about we get the consent of the people involved in this clinical trial? He didn't follow all those procedures. He just decided to himself that I want to manage my patient's pain, so I am going to give them morphine after the operations but here is the thing that was outstanding about this doctor he did those experiments on black people and mostly on children isn't that dodgy are we saying there were no white children that were being admitted into the hospitals honestly i don't mean to be racial i don't mean to be racist i don't mean to be you know but i'm just saying he was doing the experiments on black children mostly he was doing the experiments on black people but it was mostly children because he was working with children mostly so while he was doing all these trials some people actually were able to survive the trials and they went home and they were fine right but unfortunately there was a kenyan girl aged 10 and her name was Lavenda who went in for an operation it was a simple procedure well I think it was simple they were just going to remove her appendix but what happened to this girl she was injected with this morphine and this girl died in her sleep and it was ruled out as sudden death okay and it was left like that and then in 1988 a two and a half year old boy was having difficulties. This boy was actually an Indian boy. His parents were Indians, uh, but they were living in Zimbabwe. So he was having difficulties urinating. So the doctor suggested that he should just get circumcised. Yeah. So he went in for that simple procedure, circumcision. And then 75 minutes after the procedure, the doctor handed this child to his parents and said to them open court here is your child I brought him back from death close court he didn't give the parents any instructions on how to deal with the child on what to do he just handed them the child with that statement the parents took their child home when they got home this child fell into a deep sleep. When he woke up, he was vomiting some yellow liquid. They rushed the child back to the Avenues clinic. The child died six hours after his operation. Six hours. Again, it was ruled out as a sudden death. But the parents were suspicious, like... Why was this child vomiting? Why did you discharge the child 75 minutes after the procedure? Why didn't you observe the child a little longer? They were suspicious. Like, why would circumcision kill a child? Right? Right. He's also, he was also suspected of killing a four-year-old girl called Titi. And also another woman called Irene, who was... Um, who had some Greek, who was a Greek de de descendant. And lastly, he was suspected of killing a woman called Rose, a Nigerian woman. And this all was happening at the Avenues Clinic in Harare. This is where all these people died. So the nurses that worked with this doctor, they became suspicious and they started reporting like, no, something is wrong. This doctor, every time there is a, a, a procedure that happens, patients are dying. Pati the, the death rate is just too high. This is not normal. This has not been happening. Why is it happening now? But nobody actually paid attention. Nobody paid attention. The nurses even went a step further and they blew the whistle to the media. It was reported in the media that 
patients in the avenues are dying after procedure. Nobody did anything about it. Nobody. Nobody said anything. Nobody did anything about it. However, there was then a report that was presented to Parliament that said um, the doctor is carrying out clinical trials of a certain drug. And this drug was morphine. He was carrying out that, that he was experimenting with the, the, the drug on children. Okay. And then Parliament said they had to launch an investigation. An investigation was launched and Dr. McGowan, Dr. Death was arrested. Dr. Death was arrested. After he was arrested, uh, there was um, like a protest from um, some students from the University of Zimbabwe. And this was Zimbabwe. And this was organized by Obey Mudzingwa. Okay, they protested that this doctor was racist, this doctor was killing black children, and they wanted him in prison. If he is not in prison, they are going to kill all white people, you know, yeah, 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 racism came into play, everything else came into play, but this was just a doctor who was just, I think, sick in the head. But anyway, what then happens? Doctor is taken to court. He even got a lawyer. Yeah, it doesn't matter what kind of crime you do, lawyers are always there. They're always ready to defend you. Shimoni, baby. Money talks. So he got a lawyer, and in his defense in the court, he said if Morphan could actually work on adults, why wouldn't it work on children? He was just trying to prove that it can also work on children. He even went on to write um, in his journal, you know those medical journals that these doctors write all the time because they found something, they think they've discovered something new. He thought he had discovered something new and his new discovery was no child should be discharged uh, within 24 hours of an operation. So a child should be discharged after 24 hours. Is that a new discovery? Really? doctor but anyway according to him that was um a new discovery that he actually put in his journal okay in court do you guys know patrick chinamasa the patrick chinamasa back then patrick chinamasa was an attorney general he was a senior prosecutor so he was leading the prosecutor this the prosecution he was leading the state okay because it was the state versus this guy and obviously the parents of these children were also in this um in the whole court and trying to figure out if their children are going if they're going to get justice for their children and remember i spoke about five names but he was only charged for two the two and a half year old boy and the 10 year old girl so the other parents were unhappy because they could not understand why the prosecution had dropped the other three people. And guess what he was charged with? He was actually charged with um, negligence. He was charged with um, an ethical practice. Nothing to do with murder. And if Dr. McGowan had been found guilty of unlawful clinical trials, then the proper charge before the High Court should have been murder. I think um, this is a tremendous miscarriage of justice for the charge of clinical trials not to have been pursued. And I'm not satisfied. And none of the other aggrieved parents are satisfied. Nothing, nothing, nothing. It was negligence. It was um, uh, unethical practices. 
yeah so he was charged with two counts they dropped the other three chinamasa in um presenting his case he described the doctor as and i caught open court a messenger of death stalking our hospitals close court that was how chinamasa described the death doctor i, I would actually understand why people um labeled him the death doctor and the serial killer because who knows how many people later died after he did those experiments on 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 them probably they died at home and you know the cases when they never got to the hospital nobody knew at the hospital that uh, this is what happened okay so anyway why i say this doctor was probably psycho is i'm going to read this in the courtroom okay in the courtroom he was seen playing with a metal chain he was eating sweets he was harming to himself of course judge paddington uh, judge paddington garway cautioned him reprimanded him to stop he stopped but what does that say about somebody who's facing such serious allegations why would you go into a courtroom and start hamming to yourself and start eating candy and start uh, playing with a chain psycho psycho alert yeah anyway this is what judge Paddington Garway decided the man was found guilty two counts two counts of what negligence unethical practices nothing to do with murder okay so after he was found guilty he was sentenced to one year in prison six months were suspended and he was ordered to pay one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars to the families i'm not sure if it was one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars to each family and i'm not even sure if it was one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars to the five families or just to the two families and obviously, uh, the Medical Society of Zimbabwe stripped him off of his license. They struck him off. After he finished serving his sentence, he was deported to the UK. When he got to the UK, he appealed to start practicing. He appealed against uh, the striking off of his license. Unfortunately, even the UK also banned him from practicing anywhere in the world. Now he's an old man. He was born in 1937. He is definitely, definitely an old man. In 2002, actually, that is when uh, the UK decided that, no, you cannot practice anywhere in the world. They actually banned and um, took away his license. So he cannot practice anywhere in the world. <sighs> Talk to death. So that's a story about a serial killer who was stalking the hospitals of Zimbabwe. I understand he actually worked in Parinyatwa as well as in the Avenues Clinic and doing all these experiments over a period from 1986 to 1992. He actually is said to have done the experiments to over 500 patients. Yeah. That's the story of the day. That's the story of the day. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for liking. If you haven't subscribed, if you haven't liked, like, what are you waiting for? If you haven't shared, what are you waiting for? Come on. Let's grow the channel. Like I always say, guys, stay safe. Stay away from crime. Because if you do crime, you are most likely to do the time. Be blessed and be safe. Indeed, there is COVID out there. Keep yourself safe. Mask up. Do what you need to do to stay safe. Goodbye.